Yeah! Fucking heavyweight champ! That's right. Kobe Durst, Diamond Tiger. He gonna find you and take you out. Yeah! You don't want none, then bodies keep piling up. You don't want, you don't want none, and he ain't showing no love. You don't want, you don't want the Diamond Tiger. You don't want coming for you. You don't want Kobe Durst. You don't Welcome, everybody, to Juice Pro Wrestling Episode 80, The Diamond Tiger, with Sretton and the Juice via cell phone all the way up from the Great North, is the Black Label Pro heavyweight champion of the motherfucking world, the Diamond Tiger himself, Kobe Durst. What's going on, Kobe? Yeah, what's up? You don't want none. Your <laughs> bodies keep piling up. It's Kobe Durst. What's up? Uh, that's right, what's brother. What's going on, dude? <laughs> <laughs> so kobe man this uh i'm really really pumped to have you on the show we've been uh kind of planning to have you on for a while now and the stars aligned and uh what better timing than you know to have you right now you got a huge weekend coming up um you are part of the black label pro i think they only have the one match right yeah well i, I so i think it's, it's kind of like a wrestle party the the um all glory yeah yeah so All Glory, for those of you that do not know, is uh, being held, I believe it's this Saturday. It's the, the day before Bound for Glory. And what it is is Impact Wrestling is gathering a bunch of the premier promotions in the Chicagoland and Midwest area, like Black Label Pro. You got our homies, uh, shout out to Steve and Warrior Wrestling. Um, you got Zello Pro, Galley Lucha, uh, I think Wrestling Revolver, and so on and so forth. But they're, all these guys are going to be bringing a little bit of their flavor um, under the Impact Wrestling banner, which is really cool. Um, it'll be, I believe it airs on Twitch, so you guys subscribe to the Impact Wrestling channel on Twitch, and you can watch Kobe kick the ass as he takes on uh, Rich Homie Juice himself, AJ Gray. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and one, one thing about this match that, that's kind of funny is, so maybe about seven to nine months ago, uh, Rich Homie Juice, AJ Gray, and I, uh, we, we had a match. Uh, it, it was a uh, tryout for Beyond Wrestling. Nice. And we were we were the first tryout match out of maybe like 15. And we had five minutes in the ring, and the only rule, there, there was one rule that Beyond had, they said, don't hit the speaker. AJ Gray and I go in there, and of course, the first fucking dive I do, I push him, and he bumps the speaker. He doesn't hurt it, but he fucking hits it. And <laughs> Quit Drew hitting the almost table. stops the yeah, Drew just about stopped the match, like, right then and there. Um, but luckily, like, just, I don't know, somebody, like, talked to him and calmed him down. We finished the match, and then, and it was, it was an awesome match. They had, like, a really good time. And then, um, yeah, we really uh, got a lesson of, of just, like, what it what it really means to follow instructions that day. So, <laughs> dude, it'll be really funny having this match at Impact and uh, all glory as being <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully well, it goes a lot better. Yeah, and the good thing for you, um, I mean, I've seen you many a times now, and we've had the chance to hang out. Uh, the last time I seen you was um, the GCW, the Two Cup Stuff Show. Uh, we're kicking it there, and, dude, I had a fucking great time there, man. You killed it there. That Everybody that night killed it. It was The energy was amazing that night. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we had a big weekend um, that weekend. Uh, so we did two cup stuffed and then the next day, uh, we were at all out and then Sunday we're at warrior wrestling six and, you know, no oh, knock wow. to any of them guys, uh, the other promotions, but man, I, I felt almost warrior was really great for energy too. Um, the, I would say the same about, uh, AE dub, but we were in, uh, what the box seats and it was like fucking Got being it. at it, watching wrestling as a like silent movie. Somehow there's like, you can't hear shit in those boxes. Yeah, and those fancy boxes. Um, yeah, yeah. The Sears All Center needs to like step up. The, yeah, the fancy box. The, yeah, the boxes were not fun. No, the event was awesome. Everything about yeah. it was cool. But yeah, they were not. They, you totally don't feel like you're a part of it. Like, dude, their entrance music would come on, and it's like, what the fuck? Like, Couldn't hear entrance fucking... music. <laughs> you could barely see anything. Um, like the spread that they had. I'm not like I'm not going to a wrestling event so I could like eat. That's not why you go to these things. Yeah. But the spread was lame. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, they had like, 
Yeah, even the the alcohol and stuff like well, it was all supposed to be paid for, and they barely had enough for like yeah like six dudes, and there was like twelve of us in there. So yeah, yeah. But whatever. And you but know, it was the juice cool. was drinking a case himself. So. But that GCW event on Friday, that the energy, um, it was fucking amazing. I've, I've said it before. Uh, I'm not into the hardcore stuff, but the energy in that place was. Unlike any other re- live wrestling show that I've been to, like those fans are crazy. You guys are crazy. Like the 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 like everybody that performed and and worked and and fought. Oh man, it was it was it was very impressive. It was really cool. Well, one thing like with the GCW shows is obviously you're, you're dealing with hundreds as opposed to AEW, who's just trying to accommodate thousands of, of people. Right. Uh, and if, sure. if you don't mind me asking, what were the box seats? What you pay for them? Um, what we do like one twenty? We got it, and I think that was actually like a kind of a hookup through a shout to our boy uh, yeah, Dave yeah. Gold from the Hub Chicago. So it, it was cool yeah. just to be there was cool, but you know, and then you know our homies, uh, yeah. you know Martin and John from Wrestling with Unicorns, I believe they were there. Yeah, I, I talked to him there. Um, you know, well, I, it, it'll probably be a process, right? Like as as they run more shows, like I'm, I'm sure they they probably their Twitter's probably lit up. Where's the alcohol? All this stuff, so. Yeah, they'll yeah. probably figure it out as they run more and more shows. Yeah, I I don't think you know what I don't believe I don't think it was on the promotion. I I believe it was the Sears Center. Yeah. I, I was there for uh, Bound for Glory, the first one in two thousand eight. Uh, that was a hell of an experience because uh-huh. I was like uh, during the Sting Samoa Joe World Championship match. I've said it many times in here because I'm fucking stoked about it. But I was like third, fourth row back from the ring, you know. So they come through my aisle and shit, it. and there's nothing you can't replace that kind of like feeling and vibe when you're that close to the action and like on camera and shit and just you know fucking sting <laughs> comes through your yeah, aisle definitely. are you guys are you guys gonna go to bound for glory this weekend um no actually it's sold out and uh our, our funds oh, are not. a little low we we planned on it but we'll be watching on twitch yeah for it's sure on twitch, is it? yeah. for sure and it's yeah. um actually it's still kind of uh up in the air whether or not we end up hitting South Bend on Friday or Saturday, um, you know, we hit out to all glory. So that's still kind of up in the oh, air. Oh, sweet, sweet. So, yeah, it, well, if you are there, definitely uh, look for me uh, before the show. <laughs> oh, yeah, before and after, you know. Yeah, definitely, pal. But, uh, yeah, it, it's it's going to be a, a fun-filled fucking weekend in Chicago once again. Um, we're also going to be heading out uh, November 2nd, uh, to the MLW super fight. Um, so that'll be that'll be a fucking good time. Chicago, I'm telling you, man. I mean, Kobe, you, you come out this way quite a bit. I mean, you work with Mikey and Black Label, and shout out to Mikey because that was my first taste. And I'll give uh, everybody kind of how we met. I remember I remember telling you this, um, I think, at the last time I saw you. <laughs> we were uh, It was the Big Trouble and uh, Little Crown Point event. And you come out asking, yeah. like, anybody got any smoke? <laughs> so I was like, I got a Marlboro <laughs> Red. And you look at me like... Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. Well, I mean, we just we just legalized the uh, the weed up here in Canada. Yeah, and then yeah. I, I I do a I do a show in Illinois once every uh, once or twice a month, yeah. and of course we're we're not dumb enough to bring it across the border. So right. yeah, so we, we get there and we're like, hey, anybody got it? Anybody? Got it? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> and man. it's a good bonding experience. That's how we ended up. That's how we ended up connecting to do this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's 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 fucking great, man. Uh, I actually I hooked yeah. you up with that pen that I used. Uh, yeah, no, I know it's sitting in the. It's, uh, it's, I um, I would never bring a pen back over the border, but uh, it's just. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I got it. <laughs> yeah, dude, um, and uh, dude, in twenty twenty, <laughs> Illinois, uh, they're legalizing recreational. So, I mean, hey, I play. Yeah, lo- yeah, no, so that's that's gonna be a game changer for us. Oh, right, for sure. Um, but, no, Illinois really embraced the co- companies like Freelance Wrestling, Black Label Pro, yeah. and uh, Glory Pro. Yep. Um, just, like, three companies, for example, that just, they, they load up a car of us Canadians who are willing to, to make the trip for, you know, yeah, you, just so, the opportunity, pretty much. And you're a part of, like, that little group and or the what I like to call the Canadian clique. So it's, like, you and Ethan yeah. Page, uh, Shane Saber, Space Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I enjoy it a lot. I yeah. think it's fucking super dope. I mean, you guys are fucking road warriors, man. Like just hitting the road every weekend, coming from Canada, and uh, man, I've seen you go through some shit in your matches, bro. 
And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, well, one thing that we really believe is, is the way to become like a great wrestler is to do it every single weekend. And that, that was kind of how the guys used to do it back in the day is yeah. every, like they wrestled all the time and you learned by doing it and yeah. by getting out there and getting on the road, you're getting like valuable experience that you, that you can't get anywhere else. Oh, exactly. Um, and then for this, uh, for this all glory show, it's going to be wicked. It'll be, uh, the car will be Space Monkey, myself, and Mark Wheeler going down. That'll be the Canada car. Nice. Yeah, Space Monkey. Have yeah. you been a part of the uh, Warrior Wrestling part of that? He's yeah, him and the Mark are part of the, the Warrior, yeah, and then yeah. I'm doing I'm part of the Black Label. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's I mean, hey, and that's super cool for you guys. I mean, because that exposure right there, and I know like if people are finally starting to turn the page on Impact, as far as like you know. If, for I mean, you're a wrestler, you're a wrestling fan you, for a long time, and kind of somewhat justifiably so. Impact was getting a lot of shit from the fans, but they were they were giving out shit, you know. They had a piss poor product. Then uh, you got Scott Demore and uh, Don Callis kind of take over with Anthem Sports Entertainment, and man, they've totally turned it around. Like, uh, I don't know. Dude, if you... Yeah, check it out. They have the North as their tag team champion. Right. You have freaking. Sabu coming back like it's like it's freaking 1995 again. That's RVD's right. in there doing his Rhino. Uh, you have like Johnny you know, Rhino's Swinger, in there. Brian Cage is like no one's in better shape. You have Michael Elgin back to Japan. Yes. Like they, they, like it's a crazy lineup. Um, and and then as far as the women go, you have uh, like uh, Jordan Grace, Trisha Parker. Um, you have uh, Tessa. Tessa Blanchard. You have all these like all these crazy talents that are. Um, yeah, and, and then with the competition of like AEW and all WWE different um, mm-hmm. brands that they have, like and, and Ring of Honor, like you have know, so many like different things just competing with each other. It's such a cool time to be a wrestler. I know a wrestler, a fan, like just involved. It's uh, I've said it many times. Sometimes it's a little overwhelming because you it's hard to keep up. You know, like it, yeah, man. I, what, what I always say is, is, is like it, it shouldn't be like a job. Like you, you pick what you want to watch, and right. And the rest, like honestly, you'll 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 catch it on the dirt sheet. Yeah, no, for sure, man. I you know right. Cause, anybody cause who says they don't read it's probably gonna win, right? Yeah. But eventually, like like we can't all just watch wrestling seven days a week. I mean, some guys do, but yeah, those those motherfuckers please. living in their mother's basements playing D and D. That's right. <laughs> and you know, I. Like it props to those guys. Yeah, because they're living the fucking sweet life. It's the only yeah, life. Man. I I, anytime I see those guys, I hail them. Yeah, yeah, you got to, man. I mean, that's sure, yeah. what a fucking time to be a wrestling fan. But I mean, you guys are gonna get this exposure. My whole point is like they uh Impact has developed a pretty damn good following on Twitch. Um Yeah. And, you know, and, and and all the different platforms too, right? Like you have TV, you have like all these different streaming services yeah. that you can do. Even like with independent wrestling TV now, like oh yeah, the app, the way that you're able to stream your favorite, yeah, the way that you're able to stream your favorite independent wrestling companies, like mm-hmm. oh yeah, I, I check like, a lot of that. Wrestling's never been more accessible, and it's like like it's professional. Like they're they're doing like multiple different camera angles, commentary, yeah. like. You don't need the E, man. You don't need that big, you know, the uh, Vegas showcase, however you would uh, make an analogy of that, the big circus show. You don't need that. I like it being the, like both you guys, being the the new guy to the whole thing or being, like having my um, fandom re-ignited. Ignited. Um, One of the biggest draws for me is the fact that most promotions, like each promotion has its own personality, yeah. which is really cool. It's not yeah. 8, 10, 12 different promotions where each one is kind of like the same or trying to copy someone else or whatever. Each each announcing team is different. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some nostalgic qualities with some of the guys that are still in it. There's new guys that are fantastic. There's new wrestlers. There's young, old. Like It's a good mix. And then you got something like... I'm like we we knock WWE pretty often cuz cuz we just find it boring but we want it to be awesome but it's like this highly produced arena show like it's not even like AEW's an arena show but WWE seems it's like a bigger arena show but then you got something like what just launched last week NWA yeah which what is purposely made to look like Throwback. low budget stage show the the ring has the ring is carpeted like yeah. It's Studio just wrestling. it looks old school, so it it's like almost two sides of of the thing. But then you have like all these other different promotions, and man, they all do. Every one of them are really cool, and like you said, like the streaming, 
uh, services, man, their production quality is awesome too, which yeah. makes you able to pick and choose and really enjoy a bunch of stuff and just really, really be entertained. It's, it's, it is really an exciting time for, for pro wrestling. It's awesome. For sure. I totally agree with that, man. That's, uh, yeah. Kobe, um, oh, uh, go ahead, man. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to say, um, the other thing too is there's something for everybody, right? Like WWE probably isn't going to appeal to us, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's, you know, you're not the target demographic anymore. Right. It's like um, when we were kids. And, and <laughs> honestly, yeah, even, even like, even if you watch some of the, like, like where where people are in love with like the attitude era. If you, if, if maybe if you watch it back, maybe you wouldn't see it the same because you weren't you, you were a kid back then, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. So maybe maybe like maybe what's happening today and what's been happening is just as good as it was back then. It's just you you can't quite appreciate it, right? Yeah. And I mean, and it's it, it's easy to look back and and see The Rock as a as a crazy superstar and, mm-hmm. and Stone Cold because now now you see them at, at once they're older and they're still stars. Um, but I mean, now I, I, I think that, that like you have know, John Cena going into Hollywood and all these guys doing these, these movies and especially with all these streaming services, they can. Um, so I think that as, as you look back, um, these bands are going to, are going to build nostalgia for, for the kids who, um, are growing up. Mm-hmm. And, and then as, as they get older, they're going to be able to start switching to the AEW, the Ring of Honors, the Impact. Yeah, for sure. Or WWE, maybe they maybe they like cater to older people. I don't know. I'm well, not a marketing. No, no, well, the other <laughs> thing that's really cool is let's say somebody like you who who knows what your dream is and know, knows what you're aspiring to, and you're already pretty awesome. Like you're an awesome performer, you're an awesome wrestler, um, and then you're getting better and better, meeting more people. Uh, let's say the dream gets fulfilled and you're a star tomorrow. All your fans have full access to your catalog of matches yeah. in the past, so they can go back and go, "Holy shit! He first started doing this move two years ago or a year ago, or this is when you first started saying like one of your catchphrases that makes a crowd pop." And right. like, it's cool to to know that. Like, the, the, I mean, think about how many times you've had something that might be something uh, iconic in the history of your wrestling career that is already. Uh, part of some highly produced streaming service or something that that is that the internet has access to forever. It's it's really really cool. So like, it's like it's well, on the internet yeah, man, forever. Kobe Durst, the early years are are happening right now. Every yeah. Yeah. time I, I I step in there, every time somebody's recording, yeah, there's a, there's potential for for a really big moment. Whether it's like like that, like I had a match where um I was dumped off a scaffolding and almost missed the table, or whether it's me pile driving Heidi Lovelace off a ladder, like. Yeah. There, there's all these like different moments in my career that, that like you, you kind of look back on and and if if you're able to to continue and, and really make it yeah those those become huge yeah do another thing i like and this goes back uh also kobe to the last time we hung out um right after you know everything was over well i think no there was still going but it was towards the end when we were out and hanging and shit with uh it was it me you Stratton, and like logan stunt a couple other people um yeah i love how like you guys, okay, so the match just happened, and you guys, and th- I do the same thing with my band. Like, you know, I'm always looking like, hey, like, I play a show, and to me it's like game footage, and it's bragging rights. Like, if I get something, it's like, oh, great, that's out there, it's on the internet, it's really good, I'm fucking posting it everywhere. That's what's great about you guys, uh, the professional wrestlers in this day and age, because there's so many fans and with cell phones and shit and social media getting clips. You know, maybe if it's something that, like, the fucking IWTV or whoever's film or whatever promotion didn't get it, but this fan got this killer angle of this devastating move that you did. You know what I'm saying? And you got that. You have it right there. And there's nothing more like self gratifying and uh, so- something that you can use to like promote your self worth and everything and value to other companies than that. Like you guys got it made now, dude, to where all these other wrestlers back in the day didn't have that. You know, it's just. That's it's- right, man. Once. Once the gift Instant. has happened, once you've taken that bump, they can't take that bump away from you. That's right. happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, so you always for have better that or for worse, man. You're, you're able to post that out there. Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, and 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 then you you have this like cachet of of different like of of stunts that, that you've pulled, and you're able to actually study and then say, oh, what was safe, what wasn't safe about it, um, right. and then try to improve and and better what what you've done before, because like like when it, when you first start training, you, you like 
you know, taking a pile driver is pretty scary. Oh, fuck uh, yeah. You know, 10 years later, you're doing a match, and you're doing, all of a sudden you're doing a Canadian Destroyer on the ring apron. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, it's and, the and, hardest and part of the like goddamn that. ring. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Man, dude, they, that shit's nuts to me still, like, seeing all that stuff. Canadian Destroyers, too. And it kills me because, to me, that was, like, of the past 20 years, that was the most, like, innovative, crazy, like, oh, my God, move. And now it's been, it's just so well, overdone. For, for us up here, we just call them Destroyers. Nice. That's right. Destroyers and bacon. <laughs> well, speaking speaking of Canadian Destroyers and you being a Canadian and all, and uh, it's, Going back yeah. to the impact, I mean that's another cool thing. They're owned by uh, Anthem, which is a Canadian company. Um, yeah. What What is your opinion or your take? I mean, did you look up the guys like? Uh, let's kind of get into that just real quick. Uh, guys like Petey Williams, um, growing up, or like, did you aspire to like? Hey, man, like you see these guys like fuck. Like who was who was your influence to like get into wrestling? Yeah. So. Um... I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling until I was in high school. Cause, like, I watched a little bit when I was a kid, and I just, like, fucked up some of my friends. Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, didn't you see the fucking <laughs> warnings? Please don't try this at home. <laughs> What's the Ray Mysterio? Yeah, I was yeah, like, like I was like, I was going to listen to that. Yeah. <laughs> I broke my ankle five times. <laughs> yeah. Bottom. And even, like, so I was, thir- I was 13 when I started watching wrestling, and I was in wrestling school by the time I was 15. Nice. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't listen to that warning at all. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah but uh so the the first match that i can actually remember watching um was uh it was dollar truth uh, back in, in impact doing uh or in tna doing uh the the six-sided ring so yeah that yeah. was that's kind of like my first like kind of memory watch it back and then I, wow. I i got into wwe but i think that what i was really into was because was i couldn't watch wrestling but i was allowed to play the video game hmm so like I would play like I I had like SmackDown Shut Your Mouth and then I had yeah. like all the the SmackDown versus Raws and I would always play like the GM mode and and even though I didn't really like I I, I had heard of The Rock and like I kind of knew who Triple H was like I was kind of learning who all these guys were mm-hmm. as I, I would play these games, um, but like my favorite wrestler when I was in high school like I like was The Miz. Oh okay. Right. He was yeah man he he was awesome to me and and uh, like at the time. He, he was doing like Miz and Morrison. They had the dirt sheet. Yeah. He was throwing himself the chick magnet, saying he was awesome. <laughs> and I think just for like, cause yeah, the attitude. Know, when well, for me, I was kind of like a like a you know a skinny fat high school kid. Like I didn't really have a whole lot going for me. But when you would see him standing beside Morrison, mm. like obviously the Miz is a, like a crazy athlete. But when he stands beside John Morrison, it doesn't yeah. look like like he, he no he makes Morrison's him look bad, super right? shredded, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He's so shredded, and then the Miz is standing on the side of him, and everybody's calling him Puddy, right? But <laughs> he still had, like, such a confidence. He would call himself a chick magnet and stuff. So I, yeah. I think I could really understand what, like, 15-year-old me would identify with. Right. Yeah. Um, so then I started wrestling. Nice. Who do you, uh, who'd you start training with? So the, like, training school that I started at is called Squared Circle Wrestling. They shut down now. Um, it was run by uh, El Fuego, who... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to train with like like Edge and Christian and right. Rhino like back in the day, or like mm-hmm. travel with those guys. Yeah, he's still um, doing shit, isn't he? It was a good school. What's that? Is he still doing shit? Uh, he like still rents rings for like like there's Greek Town here in Toronto that he does, or like Lucha Toronto. I think he rents the ring for. Okay. Um, I I don't know if he's ever gonna open a school back up again. But uh, like like he like he mostly trained like uh, like he trained like Gail Kim and Aaliyah nice. in WWE. So yeah, oh, he's yeah, got some I always like, forget. That have... A lot of people probably forget that Gail Kim. She's Canadian. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what Roddy Piper was Canadian too, I believe. Yeah, Roddy Piper was Canadian. Um, There's a rumor I, I, going I around that, that he was I'm, related I'm distantly sure. to the Hart family. Oh yeah, maybe I. Just when you think you have the answers, I chase the questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one thing that I'm kind of known for is not knowing, like, a like, I think I know a lot about wrestling compared to just, like, 
so you know, that's your a... average person. But but right. when I get in the room with like a wrestling fan or like other wrestlers, like I I, I don't even like hey. I don't have the the information. You know, and, and there's nothing wrong with move. that. I mean, I dude, I fucking yeah. flub all the time on here, and I don't come out as claiming they're like, oh, well, I know this, this, and that. I do know a lot of shit, but I probably forgot more. You know, just in sure, my sure. years of fucking partying and whatever, because I've been, I'm, dude, I'm, I just turned 37. I literally have sure. been watching wrestling since I was five years old. Like, I remember yeah, a lot of, taken. yeah, it's, it's a lot. And all the little details, you know, and you get like the smart marks online, like, oh, you didn't know this or you didn't know that. It's like, who fucking cares, dude? Or the people that over critique shit that don't know how to just have fun with stuff, you know? Like uh, what we do on here, we uh, like Sren was uh, alluding to earlier. Like, there's you know times where it's like we're bashing WWE, but I don't even consider it that. It's a, it's more or less a a rant of like why I'm unhappy with their product, you know, because it it was a company that for me that's how I got started in it. You know, it was for me first. Yeah. It was that Hogan era WWF, and then into early late '80s early 90s WCW and so on and so forth. We all know the rest of what happened there. But, uh, man, you, you don't have to fucking know everything to, like, be a fan and just enjoy. And it, it, that's the one thing that kind of pisses me off about professional wrestling, and I'm not going to be shy about saying it, is sometimes the worst fucking thing about wrestling is the fans. You know, it's like, and you don't have to agree or disagree with me. I'm not looking for that. I'm just saying it so because say, it's the fucking truth. Juice for thought. Yeah, I'll say that uh, sometimes the worst thing about anything, about a job, yeah. about um, traffic, about, uh, you know, uh, like even about like eating out, sometimes it's just the people there, right? Like yeah. you know, sometimes it's just shitty fucking people. Um, and, and what I'll say, uh, what I'll say that's good about the wrestling fan is like if you go on Twitter, there's like a big, there's a family community kind of on there, right? Rest, there, the wrestling community on Twitter. Back you up. I've been telling Sretton because uh, he's been fucking false flagging on Twitter for quite some time. He's got this handle, right? I don't like it. Right. He's fucking ignorant when it comes to Twitter. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, I agree wholeheartedly with you. I think out of all the social media platforms, Twitter is definitely the most supportive, uh, the most in informative, and the greatest. I mean. Everybody, like wrestlers have, you guys all have Facebooks and all that shit, but I see more interaction coming through Twitter, like especially through fans and wrestlers, you know, um, on yeah, that to platform. Me, if, than if you want to interact with somebody, like like whether it's whether it's wrestling, whether it's like your your favorite athletes or, yeah. or your favorite like, you know, Instagram models or, or actors or actresses, I think Twitter is pretty much your platform if, if you're looking to interact with, with a, a public figure. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. And and I, I I think yeah nowadays like like uh, I I say like people people are sensitive they can be kind of babies so everybody wants to be heard and that's kind of you can understand that yeah yeah but um, I'm trying to be heard but you, you got to take the good with the bad so yeah like 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 yeah all all the rest like fans they can get up in arms oh I don't like this show because this this and this yeah and and everybody thinks that they could do a better job. Um, my whole... I, the other thing I think that, that you have to think about is, like, who's watching wrestling sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um, because you know, I, I think people use wrestling as an escape. For and sure. I think that that the characters that are on there are larger than life. And if you can attach yourself to a character, you too yeah. can kind of, like, like, when I, like, like let's say I, I was a big fan of Jeff Hardy when I was a kid. So, dude, so when, I, dude, when I went to dude. school, maybe I, like, wore, like, black jeans and, and, oh, the big uh, Jankos? Kind of, uh, Did you have the funny. Jankos? So, uh, yeah, sure. So, like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, no, but, like, it's something like that. So, you go to school, you kind of look like that. You feel like that. You kind of, like, yeah, the outcast. Is, like, confidence or whatever. Yeah, so so I think that, that um, when that kid grows up, if he hasn't really figured himself out, he's still kind of, you know, using wrestling as an escape. You can almost understand yeah. where. Like, he living vicariously. Like, ah, oh, fuck AEW. I said. Not so upset about this or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, you need to take everything with a grain of salt and move on. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree, man. There's, it's just, there's with, uh, you know, obviously with the good comes the bad, and it's just, 
Yeah. It's always going to be there. So it's it's just something I personally need to get over, and I do for the most part. But it just – I'd be a liar if I, you know, said it didn't bother me. Like, you know, if people have nothing fucking better to do, like, go jerk yourself off no, or do you. something, you know, alleviate your fucking pain to get, you know? <laughs> definitely, definitely. But, uh, man, dude. But, you know, social media also, like – like I said earlier, it's given you guys as wrestlers something that the wrestlers have never, ever had and is a way right. to communicate directly with your fans and you, well, your fan base and to be interactive with them. And um, I mean, dude, the possibilities are endless I, I, with some of the shit. Well, I mean, and- look at the perfect example to me is like the Young Bucks. You know, their body of yeah. work was there. Um but not only did they have the body of work, and it was being recorded from like PWG to everywhere, New Japan, to ROH to you know where AEW, wherever they're at now. Um, there was that, but there was also the interaction and the uh, hey, we're gonna make a YouTube show, and it was just basically like a a, a vlog, you know? It's a glorified, sure. glorified, 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 Brendel fly, <laughs> um, a vlog, and it, it captured the imagination of a lot of people and the attention. And they interacted with a lot of these people, you know, like Matthew Massey, Young Buck's dad. I talked to him on a regular basis. Super dope guy. He doesn't have to fucking talk to me. He doesn't have to say shit to me, sure. you know, like it's it's such a great time for you guys. Basically, my whole point is, is to get over, you know, like a guy like you who's yeah. fucking got the talent, dude. I, I've seen your matches and I ain't stroking no egos or any of that bullshit because I do. I genuinely enjoy your fucking matches, dude. I think it's great. And you put your fucking body through some shit, man. And uh, thank you. Now, what I'll, what I'll say is, is in, and with us, with us talking so much about Twitter and all these platforms. Yeah. I'll say one thing that I think that I am personally lacking is, is I, I think, yeah, my matches are, are fantastic. I am merch. personally petrified. No, yeah, I'm sure there's merch. Like, I, I figure that'll come. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I don't really, I don't really like, like I, I sell t-shirts over here in Canada sometimes, but I, I, <laughs> like, I don't like, even yeah, like to sometimes. bring it across the border. What Mikey harping but, on you no, on Twitter for not having a shirt or something? <laughs> no, what he what he made a, a comment about was one of our the Black Label Pro referees. I think had like four or five different shirts. At a merch table, I know and I'm Jeremy. champion of the company, and <laughs> I and I don't sell, and I I don't sell any shirts. He was just kind of, I, I think that he was just there like a pro wrestling's a weird kind of a beast. Yeah, but, yeah. And if and, and and honestly, when I'm at the wrestling show, you guys can attest to this. Hmm. At intermission, what am I doing? Yeah, hanging out, man, selling your shit. I'm usually hanging out with the fans. I'm usually outside. I'm usually like chatting everybody up. Um, I like, you know, sure, there's something to be said for standing at the merch table, and obviously there's time and place for that. And, and like, if you're signed to, to like, impact or something like that, yeah, you go, you stand at the merch table, you had yeah. your line of shirts. But as far as indie wrestling goes, like, yeah, some guys need to get uh, paid or they want to get the extra money or whatever. Me, it just isn't worth the hassle at the border. But what I was going to say is um, we're talking about Twitter, and I am personally, like, I would rather, like, jump off a ladder than construct a, like, unique tweet. Oh yeah, I am. Um, yeah, like, like I, I, I would rather like go through tables and doors and land on my head. Actions like, are speaking kind of louder than times, words. I would rather do that. My man. <laughs> yeah, than, than actually sit behind my phone and construct something like, like, like every every time I get on Twitter, I'm like, oh no, that's stupid. Right? I, I think yeah. I'm being funny, and I'm like, no, nobody's gonna get it. Everybody's gonna think it's stupid. I, I, I just delete it. So, uh, so I know I like, like, even in terms of that. Um, I, I look at guys like War Horse, who's like has the confidence to tweet in all caps and he's for all of his. Killing it like, right tweets. now, isn't he? I know, or like Danhausen. Danhausen, yeah. Like putting out some of the funniest, like, like I love his like, Pee Wee weird, shit. quirky videos. <laughs> Hilarious, <laughs> yeah. Um, or or then I I I see like like just anybody like a like Ethan Page has his blog that he yep. puts out like and and he like he, like when you when you put yourself out there like. It's, you're kind of being vulnerable, like even wrestling. I guess, like when you get out there, like people can say whatever they want about you. But I'm so used to that. But I'm so bad at just getting on the internet and like being with everybody. I just, I, I feel so lame. So that's something that I personally have to like work on. Yeah, and that kind of, um, uh, I have a question from one of our associates, Bruiser Bodie. He had a question for you, and he wanted to know. Um, I mean, he he 
thinks you're fucking dope as well. He's seen you a, a number of times uh, live doing what you do. But he wanted to know his question for you, Kobe Durst, the Black Label Pro heavyweight champion of the world, as awesome as you are at what you do to get to that next level. I mean, what do you feel that you need to improve on to take things even further than you're already at? I mean, you're kind of alluding to that already as far as, like, I, I guess you would say uh, just putting yourself out there yeah. a little bit more and not being so. Yeah, that's why I, I think it's, a, I think it's, a, it's like, I, I can think of a bunch of things right off the bat, which is, like, uh, it's awesome in the sense that I'm, I, I think that I'm, uh, it's awesome in the sense that, like, I'm aware of where I can improve. Um, so yeah, so so the interacting with people on social media, that's one thing that I, I think I can improve on. The other thing too is I think if you put me in a line of a hundred people, um there's some guys that like you look at like they are superstars. Like right. there's no doubt about it. I I think when you look at me, yeah, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm I'm not really the tallest, I'm not really anything um like I don't have like I can't grow like a cool beard, I kinda have acne, you know, <laughs> like, I'm I'm in kind of good shape, like I but I'm not ripped, I'm not fat, like they're just, I don't think there's anything that really stands out about me. You're honestly. the most realist like, motherfucker like, in the room, dude. That stands out. <laughs> sure. Maybe I'm the realest motherfucker in the room. And, and and honestly, I think I have crazy matches. And I think that there's a lot of pluses to me. But mm-hmm. if I'm just being real, I think that I, like, I don't think that I look like a superstar. Like, if I was, if I was, um. You know what, but like that's not a big deal. WWE, do, you, do you think Daniel Bryan looked WWE like a superstar? Human resources just. No, I I hear you, but I, and I think that honestly, if he was to look at himself in the mirror and and and, and just say like, hey, where do where could I improve? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, and who am I to to talk about him? But right. if we're just talking about myself, yeah, yeah, I think that that um, I can't necessarily like like yeah. If if I was in the human resources department, um, yeah, you like maybe I don't look like a superstar. Maybe um, like like I I don't I, I as much as I try to get in the gym. I'm not in the gym seven days a week, twice a day, right? Yeah. But why couldn't I be? Like, what's my excuse? So that's something that I really say to myself. Um, another thing that I think about is, like, substances. Like, I like to drink. I like to smoke. Um, and, and and I think that if you, if you look at guys hey, like, I'm a like part John of that. Cena, I think if you look at guys. Me too. No, of course. Of course, I'm you're, you're not a Me professional too, wrestler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? So if I, and, and there's plenty of guys who, who've made wonderful careers doing that stuff but then i but then i, I asked myself like is is that really like necessary or, or is that something that i should be doing right. um in order to get to the next level and it, it's not saying that i can't get to the next level like but while i smoke a little bit of weed on the weekends or, or well, like, look at guys like rob van Dam, man there. he's a perfect example oh, of dude. course of and he's course. fucking 50 uh, in, uh, in great shape <laughs> i know man and, and i mean you can look at guys like matt riddle but these are things that i think yeah. about for myself yeah, yeah other things that i start to think about too are uh, like I so I'm, I'm 23 years old. My wrestling Man, school shut tender, down when I was like tender, when I was like 20. Mm-hmm. So I'm 23 years old. And my wrestling school shuts down when I'm 20. Really, the only time that I really get in the ring is when I'm like wrestling a match. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm working out like I'd say I work out like five days a week. It's more okay? than I do. So that's just in the yeah. Well. It, but but as a professional athlete, right? Like, if if you want to like, if, if you really want to make it, you want to compare yourself to to guys like The Rock, and you want to like sit on like the same podcast like Mike Tyson has done, or things like that. Like, you gotta you gotta treat yourself the same way that these guys would have, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing I would think is is promos. Like, even just talking to you now on the phone, I'm stuttering all over the place. Like, I, I have a hard time getting my like mind like straight. You're just being um, real, man. That's the thing, Kobe. Like, uh, I, sure, I think you're doing sure. fucking great. And this is that's the yeah. good thing about our show. This ain't no cookie cutter shit, man. This is for the motherfucking realists in the room, you know? Like, they're out there listening in the world. You fucking knock out of the park. So, continue. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. And then, um, even when I think about, like, the way the guys are making it, like, like when, when you look at, like, the Ethan Page's videos and the way that he edits and stuff, yeah. like, he went and got an education for like graphic design and, and really? like knows how to edit videos and yeah, and he and he puts stuff together like all on his own. I couldn't do that. I, I have no idea where to start. So I think he could. Well, when I think about where I could improve and like different places, like how I would make it to the next level, what's nice for me and what kind of keeps me going is is I feel like I'm constantly improving. I feel like I'm doing really well. 
but I, I'm also not sitting here like, like on my couch, like, why can't I get to the next level? Like, I, I consciously know what needs to happen in order to get there. Yeah, and it's all about the grind, man. And you just keep grinding out and doing. It, you actually really got to do it. That's like me uh, saying, like, hey, I fucking smoke cigarettes. I know I got to quit. I don't want to fucking do it anymore. But it's like, uh, I put it off and I don't, you know. Like, it's, no, you fucking buckle down and do it, you know. A little, right. A little just bit. Like, just like anything. Yeah, yeah. It, but here's my thing, man. Like, you'll find you'll find that niche. And, like, a, going back to what we were talking about earlier as far as, like, the whole social media and in this day and age of professional wrestling, Dude, you're fucking that good in the ring. You're the guy to me that's like your actions fucking speak louder than your words. You don't need that fucking Dan Housen doing the Pee Wee Herman shit or the war horse <laughs> ruling all the ass in the world, which is fucking hilarious because I'm like, what the f- how is that metal to rule ass? <laughs> like, I'm a fucking metalhead. I've, I've been playing in a metal band for 15 years and I don't rule ass, but it's it's funny. It's comedic to me, so I like it. But you're not, you know what I mean? You're not that guy. To me, you're like a throwback. You're, you're and, and that's, that's like, I, I 100% get what you're saying. I think that when it comes to my matches, yeah, I I really do take pride in what I put out there. I, I think that when it comes to, like, planning yeah, a match, you get executing fucking, a match, put yourself my through some set, hell, man. Yeah, and, and, and when it comes to creating moments and having those big match bumps and those big mm-hmm. memorable holy shit like moments in the show, I like I think I kill it. Yeah. Um, but but and you're and, young and as it, shit just, still. What'd you say? You're twenty three. Yeah, man. I'll, I'll, I'll be I'll be twenty four in November. So shit, man, you're a tenderoni. Yeah. You're a little little guy. No, I don't mean little guy no, in exactly. that sense. But yeah, yeah, I'm only I'm only like five foot eight. Like, <laughs> but uh, I didn't and, mean and honestly, like. <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. Um, but I think that that in order, but like first and foremost, I like I I think that I can get bigger. I think I, like I can muscular. I think I can put on like twenty, thirty pounds of muscle. Hey, um, and I think I can do it in in a matter of five years, Kobe, right? There's and and what is that? Steroids. That puts me less than thirty. Yeah. Oh, oh come on. I've, <laughs> I I I think that the the Canadians. I think the Canadians, a lot of us, are, are kind of known for that stuff, and I, I think that, that we all do our dance and... and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of that, though, I'm excited. I think Ethan Page is having the Body Guy Classic. Did you ever hear about that? No, I didn't. Yeah, so I think you have to, I think you have to piss dirty in order to get in. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, why don't you sit on this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll so, enlarge your arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and your well, frustration. And and you know what? It's it's not a it's not a sport where we're trying to hurt each other. It's a sport where we're trying to work together and help each other to create the best product for the fans. Yeah, so, it's entertainment. Like where I said, you we don't drop that. It's kind of your own thing. Yeah. We don't we don't drop the f bomb. We try not to out of respect. You know that old school respect for the sport. You know because it is a sport at the end of the day. Um. I don't give a fuck about anything. People can say whatever they want. How many boxing fights or matches have you seen that's like, okay, you know what's going on. You know, there's some shit going on. I've seen it in professional basketball in the NBA. I've seen a lot of different sports, you know. I don't – so I like to give out that respect to everybody involved in the business. I don't drop the F-bomb, but it is entertainment. Sure, sure. But it's not – like I hate the whole WWE, like – world wrestling entertainment it is entertainment anything you do that gets your fucking attention i always use this analogy um being a musician to me and i'll give you the music thing real quick to me it doesn't matter if it's fucking metal or if it's rap or whatever if it's catchy it's pop it's fucking pop music you can hear this fucking riff that can be like from obituary or some crazy death metal band and then go to uh maybe like bad company or a fucking hey you're canadian i'll throw out some triumph out there um you know something like that as long as it's catchy it's pop you know yeah man what what so like, it's it's a competition we're competing with each other to to be at the top like there there's no doubting like like that there's there's a packing order in this business and like even if you look at like let's say like the pro wrestling the politics man the politics and pro wrestling are fucking right, bullshit there's, there's so there's there's so many different things though like there's your athletic ability there's the ability to entertain a crowd there's right. wrestling psychology there's but there's a there's lot the of guys that don't have that 
that get that just because they're right. fucking meatheads and they got the look, you know. <laughs> Took right, a couple but, of needles so, in there. But what's so cool about our competition is that it's not just a physical thing. It's not. It's it's not just wrestling. Right. There, it's, it's it's complex. It's layered. There's there's so many different things in it. And when you get into our world and you really kind of understand it, and you're one of the smarts on Twitter and things like that, like hmm. there, like it's uh, being a fan today is so different than being a fan in the '80s. And, oh, yeah. and you're, I think you're, 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 it's almost like, like the Academy Awards where like you're, you're in on like how people are performing their, their stuff. Like, 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 what did you think about during that scene in order to like have those, those tears for such a real moment? Like, yeah. like you're almost beginning to see behind and, and understand our struggle in not only like the physical side of wrestling, but like everything that's involved. I think that's a fucking great analogy, dude. Yeah. Yeah. The nail in the coffin. <laughs> Some NBA jam. <laughs> hey, so let's let's fuck all fuck all the other bullshit right now, Kobe. Let's get into some shit. Are you a gamer or what? Um, I used to be more into it. Um, like today, uh, my girlfriend had her mom over, so they were kind of like, "Oh, you're hating life." They, they were they, right, yeah. So they were they were like they were. They Wait, were Kobe, she's like, listening. You weren't stuff. hating life. You were enjoying it, right? Oh no, I was enjoying. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, so she has her as her mom. We have a, like a one bedroom apartment, and mm-hmm. her mom goes over and she really wants to like like uh, my girlfriend has schoolwork she has to do. Her mom loves to come over and like really help with the house and clean and do the laundry and just all oh, all yeah. the wonderful stuff that mothers do, right? Yeah, yeah. And I just want no part of it. <laughs> so I like I immerse <laughs> I immerse myself in in my Xbox One. And, oh yeah. Uh, Hey, I what's your, the, what's your, uh, yeah. do you mind saying your gamer tag? Yeah, man, it's just under nine inches, um, but inches of I-N-C-H-S. <laughs> All one word. Just under nine inches? Hey, you're yeah, packing some heat. Joey, Joey Ryan ain't got shit on Kobe Durst, eh? <laughs> 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 I came up with that when I was 13, so Ooh. I'm... I, have a, I was a pretty funny kid. I don't know. <laughs> Here's a quick, a quick funny little story for you. You know how Xbox, like, if you try to put some vulgar, or, like, adult humor shit on there, it won't let you do it. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. My my buddy got one, and he he swears up and down he didn't he didn't put this. Like that's he tried a couple of them, and Xbox was like, no, no, shooting it down. And then it gave him recommendations. Actually, uh, shout to Joe Riley. It was a tasteless, tasteless taint. Is what they get at Microsoft gave <laughs> Like, re- <laughs> really? Like, how does that work? <laughs> Whatever, you know? But uh, yeah. just a quick little thing. Yeah, we're going to have to, uh, after we're done here, I'm going to have to hook up and uh, add you on the Xbox One. Yeah, yeah, just for high school me, was just so obsessed with his dick, his gamer tag. <laughs> Dude, dick and fart jokes never die. Derek's never die. So, yeah, say it's not the truth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are you playing mostly, man? <laughs> Uh, so like today, I have you ever heard of it? It's called Tropico. Tropico, I know I've seen that. Yeah, it's like three honestly, parts it's kind of kinda like The Sims, but you're like a dictator. So I was playing that. <laughs> there like you go with the dicks like, again. Yeah, okay, exactly. I'm <laughs> fucking up the Um, <laughs> yeah, so I was playing that. Sometimes I'll play like Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. Nice. I'll say this: I I don't I don't play online because I don't think I'm very good. Oh yeah, that's the thing, dude. If you're fighting game, unless you're a devout fucking nerd, and hey, I'm a nerd. I love all kinds of pop culture, gaming, comics, whatever horror shit. But uh, dude, I bought Mortal Kombat 11. You have to as soon as I bought yeah, it, I had to get that with other people. You can't. You have to if you do it. You have to do it that day, the day you buy it, like the yeah. day it comes out, because people aren't like. That's right. You have to start practicing, and you got to put your hours oh, in. Oh man, dude, else, like, I played people so online. You can't get a fucking move in, and it like I'm breaking I'm shit, dude. And I'm like, fuck, I fucking you know, kill you. I know you, but you fuck your life. Day. Yeah, it's even fucking... if you start that day, those guys are so good at other games. I know, and, and you don't think that those that like the skills from like Call of Duty and the skills from all these other things are going to translate over to Mortal Kombat? They don't. Like I'm all I'm already behind. Yeah, yeah, they don't. I love Call. Which uh, right. Call of Duty are you playing? Um, we, uh, so I, I'm doing a story mode on the, the new one, the World War II one. 
Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's well, the new one. well, no, it's it's two years old now. But they didn't have a story for well, Black Ops 4. It was new when I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bought it the day it came out. It was, it's a great, I love that game, man. I think it's fucking awesome. I, I really enjoyed the zombies. Like, well, on what it. I like is because when I was really into video games, like that was when my Call of Duty 3 came out. Yep. And that was World War II. Yeah, yeah. And, and it had like a cool story. Like I remember like like your buddies with like Huxley. Mm-hmm. Um and and the other guys I don't really know and Sarge, I'd imagine yep. that there's probably a guy named Sarge in every fucking video game, <laughs> but he was in that one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So so when this World War Two one came out, like I I decided to buy that. So I play the the stories and I, and like I really like uh, Life is Strange. Oh, I never played that one. Um, I've yeah, heard you know, things. it's kind of like the Telltale games if you played, like, The Walking Dead. I'm, and... It's funny you say that because at, last night I I'm, I probably got maybe a couple more minutes left. I, I started that Telltale, Walking Dead, when it first came out, and we're talking. I mean, it was Dude, like, it pulls like, on your heartstrings. You got to get it's it. You got to get so through it. so great. The story is yeah. so fu- – I, I, hey, I, let me get And that's, that's why I play the video games. The, what, what you said right there is the story. The like, stories for me, are yeah. – For me, I find – that Telltale yeah, shit, I, I man, it made me like cry it. a couple of times. And I'm in the. Yeah. Did you finish the last one, the last season? Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Uh. I'm at the point. It kind of pissed me off because you think Clementine's gonna fuck. Spoiler alert. You think she's dead. Yeah. And then she's not. So that's where I'm at. She's missing. A, she's missing a leg now. And there's probably a couple more minutes left till I finish the whole thing. But Jesus, man, you're. You're. I, honestly, I think there's different. Is there different endings to different ones? Ooh! I don't think Clementine Monster damn like him. Mine. Oh man, you're not. Oh yeah, no, she. Or does yeah. or does she lose her like no matter? Because I played a long time ago, but I don't remember losing her damn like. Yeah. Holy. Yeah, the final season, cool. man. Man, man, no, I'm I, pretty sure I played it, but I, but I, I, I think from because what are you? Are you in like the the snow? Like oh no, you're so you're playing okay, so you're playing New Frontier, I believe. So that's oh, you're not oh, even is there playing like a third one. That's like the third one. There's the it's called like the final season, and she's holy shit. There might even be one that I haven't played. Okay. Yeah, there's she one that you haven't like, played. Oh, and I, pro- <laughs> I just fucking ruined your life. <laughs> yeah, you know, oh. man, no, that's all good. That's all good. If anything, you just told me about it. I didn't yeah. even know. I would have been. I would have well, been over here, and I I, I would have lived my whole life never having played. Oh, it's great, <laughs> man. You know, you know that telltale shit. And they did a Batman one, and it was good, but I couldn't really get into it like i did dude the yeah, one and you know there's different ones like there's one like the wolf among us that, that one... i kind of tried to play that i i did enjoy like that i enjoy that i i'm okay, familiar I, with the dc I, you know comics. maybe i have to try again because i just couldn't quite get into it and i thought i would really like it because i'm into like hokey fucking like fairy tales and nursery yeah and, bullshit like and that. that's like, what it's I, based on like, and that's an actual comic book thing like dc vertigo thing i think um it's yeah. fucking maybe awesome i didn't have to try that again yeah, do that, and you know what? One thing, they were supposed to have a second one. I I thought I seen it. Fuck, it feels like it's been two years now. They announced Wolf Among Us two, and then it's like, hey, where are you at? Where'd you go? Yeah, I have such a I'm, I have a hard time because like I'm such a simpleton. Every time I like try to start something, I have to start it from the very beginning. Like for example, I tried to watch like Friends. And I watched, <laughs> God like, damn it, Kobe! We got to end this right now. I, I got to let you go. Okay, I, I, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> You fucked up. You fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to go to bed anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're trying to watch Friends. Well, thanks for having me on, though. Thanks for thanks, thanks for always uh, supporting me with a with a pen and a and a good time after the show. Oh yeah, oh, we're not really ending right now, though. I was just giving you shit about. Oh, you're watching. not. You're oh, you're just joking. <laughs> Jokes on you. <laughs> what are you talking about? How much time do we have? Uh, now I'm all confused. As much time as you want. I'm paying for it. I don't uh, care. What... <laughs> no, I get back to anyway, what no, you were so saying I'm, though. You start. Right. You were starting to watch no, so Friends. What I was though. saying is, I'm such a simpleton. Is that mm-hmm. like, so if I try to play a video game or if I try to watch something, the example I was using is Friends. I'll watch like the first five episodes, for example, and mm-hmm. get bored and stop. So then when I try to watch it again, I can't just go and watch episode six. I have to start from episode one. Oh, you're one of those guys. I, I, yeah, I'm I'll one of those fucking around. guys. And I'll I hate s- it. I hate it about myself. I hate people that are like me. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know what my problem is. So, <laughs> so then if, if I try to play The Wolf Among Us, right, mm-hmm. like I've, I've pretty much played all of the episode one. 
Yeah. But yeah. I'm not going to be able to just go into episode two. I have to play the whole episode one again. Oh, well, I have to. That's a good one, though. Yeah, I mean, do it, man. Do it because yeah. that that whole Same series like a is game awesome. Like, like, I can't play the new Gears of War with Batista in it because I haven't played the other one. <laughs> Fuck that. Well, the other That's one, I, it was I, free. I, yeah, I've never, I've played like a couple minutes of each Gears game and it just, it wasn't for me. You know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe if I really got enveloped in it, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I'm like ADD though. I think so I'm, it's like, like, I played the first three, but like, isn't yeah. there a bunch of other ones after that? Like, yeah, there's like, yeah, man. I, you know, Xbox does the games with gold shit. So I think that's how yeah. I got my Gears collection was through games with gold. So I didn't even buy really sure. a single one. And I damn sure yeah, as hell ain't gonna buy the Batista one. Yeah, yeah, Xbox is just giving those away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. Um, <laughs> what am I playing right right now though? So it's yeah, that uh, Black Ops Four is what I always just if I'm vegging out because a lot of the times I don't have uh, excuse me that Budweiser belch. Um, I come home from work or you know get through during the show doing the show and it's like late. I my veg time is my Xbox. You know, girlfriends going to sleep or you know, kids going to sleep, whatever. And okay, thank God I can fucking get like twenty rounds of fucking zombies or something. Go, excuse me, going. Yeah. And that's what I enjoy. I haven't enjoyed a like a. I used to love the two K series, um, but anymore it's just, dude. I'm sick and tired of paying for the same fucking game year after it year is every, after yeah. year and. You know, to be honest, I've seen a lot of shit with, like, two, this 2K20. And, like, a lot of the gra- people are, like, everybody was looking for a retro wrestling game, like a throwback to No Mercy. Well, look at the graphics for 2K20, like the backstage shit. And it's just like, man, really? Like, come on, guys. Like, d- do something different, you know? Um, that's what, you know, I'm stoked to see other games. We had a, a guy named... Mike Herman from Retrosoft Studios that's doing a throwback to an old uh, WWF uh, video game called WrestleFest. Um, their video game is called uh, Retromania Wrestling, and they got they got guys like Dreamer on board, Austin Idol, the Road Warriors. Uh, they just announced John Morrison, a.k.a. Johnny Retro. Uh, that's going to be coming out like first quarter of 2020. So, Kobe, you need to check that one out when that drops. It'll be on Xbox One. And you'll probably see a JP Dub logo in that motherfucker as well. Um, but one thing that I think will be kind of cool that nobody's really done is do you imagine like a, like a wrestling game from a first person stand? Wow, that would be weird. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that be nuts? Yeah, you just, it's just like you just kind of like I don't Mike know, Tyson's maybe, punch maybe out, but too. better. You know what? Yeah, I well, think they I, did I for a 360, and it was with Impact when they signed Hogan. Oh yeah. Uh, it was it was a connect game. It was Hulk Hogan's something, and like it had a little bitty impact logo on the bottom. It's like God, because Hogan did a terrible job of promoting the fucking company that was paying him a plethora <laughs> of fucking money. Um, bullshit. But anyways, yeah, he did. I have the game. It's for three sixty. Yeah, I played it once. Um, like I say, it's a connect game, so it's got that weird fucking stigma thing. But I think it is. Kind of like I only played it one time, so I may be wrong, but it is kind of somewhat like that—the first person deal where you're training to be a pro wrestler and you're wrestling these guys. It's just it's not very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, yeah, maybe it's not a good idea. Who knows? It'd be kind of funny. Yeah, fuck it. They just man, just here's the thing: do a wrestling game. Give me and hopefully AEW does it. Um. They're looking at getting the old Aki engine back from Nintendo 64 days. That was yeah. that was the greatest gaming engine to me. Like, if you ever played, like, N64, I know you're younger, but, like, No yeah, Mercy. Of course, of course. Dude, I, I used to, like, you know, have, have to go to school in the morning, but I'd be drinking beers in high school with my friends. And, like, we'd have, like, parties playing this game, dude. And you go for hours and hours, like, doing ladder matches and tag ma- crazy tag ladder matches, all this shit. And that game still to this day holds up graphically, not so much, but the game engine does. Like as far as fun and accessibility, so I, I played it. Um, there's a there's a guy who like has a little show here in Ontario. He's like watching video games on the internet with my friends or something like that. Mm. Is uh, Trent Gibson, and uh, that was the game we played was No Mercy. So he had a little show and we played that. Nice, Trent. You said Trent Gibson. Yeah, it was my first. It was my first ever like experience with it. I'd never played it prior to that 
Nice. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was fun. It would be kind of... And, of course, everybody likes, like, Super Smash Brothers. You'll probably get, like, a fun wrestling game where you could even just, like, have, like, silly matches. It doesn't even have to be real wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy yeah. that shit. I did a Joey yeah. Ryan versus Scott Hall match. It's on the, on my YouTube. Yeah. This I, I fucking... I created these guys, and I, I tried to make them... Uh, as lifelike as I could, as authentic to the actual characters, and then just record the match and let the computer, you know, <laughs> duke it out. That's my idea for Twitch is I'm going to do, like, bullshit dream matches for Twitch and uh, no s- Nintendo 64, no mercy. See what people think. There you go. <laughs> Probably gonna be like, that's shit! But uh, that's okay. <laughs> so, Kobe, tell people where they can find Yo. you at online, man. Uh, so I'm at Kobe Durst. That's on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can like my Facebook page, Diamond Tiger Kobe Durst. But uh, yeah, mostly at Kobe Durst on Instagram and Twitter. If you guys begin to follow, fuck yeah! And, and uh, like I said, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not always on there. Maybe some guys are better at it. But I'm working on it. God damn it! <laughs> yeah. Then, Diamond then. Tiger. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Shao Kahn coming out of this motherfucker. <laughs> Let me try that again. <clears throat> Diamond Tiger. <laughs> Diamond Tiger. <laughs> That's great. It's like Zay are <laughs> who is the guy from fucking Street Fighter? Uh Bow not I want to say Rock. No, it wasn't Bison, the guy with the patch. Oh god, I don't remember. Sagit? Not Sag was this yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I saying that right? I want to say Sagat. Sagat, but I don't want to. I always know. used to say Sagat. Sagat rhymes with whoa, can't say that. Yeah, well um, I didn't. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, Diamond Tiger, it's like a street fighter thing. It's real quick before we close too, um, because I just found this out. You got your nickname. What is it? Is this from your buddy or someone that runs a, like a, they sell action figures and shit? Yeah. So, um, the guy, he, what do you do? Yeah. So, so he, he sells action figures under this like Diamond Tiger, um, Mm -hmm brand um but he also used to write it at uh, edit wrestling dvd nice. um yeah so when i started wrestling people just kind of associated me with him because he was a he was a very big supporter of mine so they started calling me diamond tiger and it just sort of stuck oh yeah i like it i think it's, yeah. it's a great nickname <laughs> it is fucking super yeah, yeah. dope i kind of say like i always tell people like like diamond in the rough with the eye of the tiger yeah um but yeah that was the origin of it hell yeah it's a great origin story yeah. too yeah, yeah. So you want to tell it again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> the tale yeah. of the Diamond Tiger. Hell yeah! What everybody <laughs> out right, there? Well, we'll probably we'll probably do more interviews uh, coming up, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally, man. Um, everybody out there listening, uh, be sure to check Kobe out. Uh, he will be um, on the All Glory show for Impact Wrestling, which, like we said earlier, is featuring a lot of the sh- premier Chicago and Midwest promotions. Uh, that will be this Saturday. It's uh, I believe tickets are still available. It's at 115 Bourbon Street in Marionette Park, Illinois. If you can't make it, make yeah. sure you're watching on Impact Wrestling Twitch. And I'm sure that's going to be available on Impact Plus after it airs. So if you have a subscription, check that out. Also, November 16th at the RDS Gym in Crown Point. I'm going to fucking be there. Uh, you're going to be defending the belt against Blake Christian. Oh yeah, man! You got any fucking Freaking shit Hamilton. you want to talk? You got you got any shit you want to talk to Blake real quick? Dude, I saw Blake Christensen. He came down here, my neck of the woods, C four Ontario. Man, that guy's so good, but I would beat the shit out of him. <laughs> That's right. Not only that, I saw that guy. I saw that guy at the GCW One Cup Stuff Show. Oh uh, man, I'm gonna stuff that bastard in a cup. You're gonna just watch. You, I'm gonna take him in that cup and I'm gonna smash him. I'm gonna smash him so hard that his face is gonna hurt so fucking bad. <laughs> Fuck you, Blake Christensen. Bad the Tiger's coming for you. <laughs> yeah, That's right. You know why? Because you'll fuck with the Diamond Tiger. Thank you, everybody. Diamond for- Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, you can catch us every week, every Wednesday on all podcasting platforms. Uh, if you have any questions or comments for us, call one 267 4199 We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just look for Juice Pro Wrestling, and we'll fucking be there. And at the end of the day, you know we got to wet them up. Wet them up. Wet them up. up. Wow!
Are you fucking wet for the tiger? You gonna do sex to me?